So now that we have set up our home page and our about page, we can now set up a portfolio gallery page. Here I have all the code loaded up for our template HTML and it started in the live server. If you want more information of how to set this page up and the template page and live server, please see the previous videos in this artist website portfolio tutorial series. Once I have my template, I can go ahead and select all of the code. Then I can copy it. Over in the Explorer on the left of the screen, right click to make a new file. I'll call this portfolio.html. Now I will paste the template code inside. I want to change the title of the page to say Mutona Authentin's Portfolio. And if I save that, now I can click on Portfolio and it looks exactly like the template page except that the browser tab indicates the title. Now I can start adding my portfolio images. I've already renamed and optimized all my images. Please see the previous video to find out how to use Photoshop to batch process your images both for size and name. So now I will go down into the body of the page in between the header and the footer. I want to add a main class. So I'm going to type main, then period, gallery page. Inside this main tag, I want to add a header. We'll label that portfolio. After the header, I want to add a section that's actually going to be the portfolio gallery because I might have a paragraph or other items before the gallery if I wanted. So I'll type section, then period, portfolio gallery. Now I need to make all my gallery items. Remember, we're going to use the grid to display these items. So I'll type div and I want to give this a class of gallery item. Inside this div, I need links that go to each of the JPEGs and we're going to use a light box to display these. I previously showed how to use the light box, so I'm going to go ahead and add the class here so it saves on typing. So I'll type A and then I'll type G light box. That gives it a class of G light box. And for the, the reference, we want it to link to the image. So I can type IMG, then put a slash, and I can pick the first image. Then what is this linking to? So we need to go in between the two link tags and we actually need to put the image. So I'll type IMG and for this we also want to have a class. So I'll put a period and I'll type gallery dash IMG. So now the image has a class and for the source of the image, it will be the same. So I can just go ahead and copy that from right there. Notice that I have a title on my image that's all lowercase and has dashes and it's descriptive. It also has my name in it for search engine optimization. Don't forget to give it an alt tag so we can type. So here we have our alt tag and we have our image source tag. There's one more attribute to the image tag that we can add that's really nice for users. We can add a title tag and this should be different than the alt or the image tag. This is a short descriptive title that will be shown when the cursor hovers over the image. If I save this, now I have my portfolio heading and I have my image. Now watch what happens if I hover my mouse. See, I can have my tooltip that shows white profusion flower. Now I'm going to go ahead and add each of my images. So I want to go down below the div class. A couple ways I can do this. I can either copy and paste everything which is probably the easiest way. And then I can just delete all the parts that will change. So now this section right here is a template for this particular gallery that I'm gonna use. So I can copy that and paste it as many times as I need. Then when I come up to the top, now I can put a new image by typing IMG, then slash, and I can just use the up arrow to go to the next one. So you can see that this is gonna be the white hydrangea flower photograph. That saves a lot of typing and it makes sure that you don't have any spelling mistakes. I can copy that, paste it in the source, add an alt attribute, and there. Now, if I save that, I have two photos that are now added to my portfolio gallery. Continue to do this until you have all your photos added. Now I have typed in all of my images. As you can see, each of the gallery items have a link that has the image, also, they have an alt tag and a title tag. It's very important that you put your name in some of these. That way Google and other search engines can find your work. It takes a little bit of time, but this little extra effort is important because this is how people will see your portfolio and your work. 
Now, all the HTML for our portfolio gallery has now been added. Now we can focus on the CSS to style this gallery. I'm going to go to the styles.css page. Remember, we want to keep our file organized. So I'll go up to the mobile first styles. So after the hero, and then after the about page, but before the footer styles, I'm going to put a new comment. And so now, first, we want to style the gallery page. Now, you may notice that we've used this same padding style on all of the pages. If I go up to the About page, it has the same. We could be more efficient and have that code combined, but then you would have to repeat the classes. I'm keeping it separate for you to understand what's going on in each page, but know that there's more than one way to do everything. Now we need to style the Portfolio Gallery. We're going to Display Grid. And remember, we're going to use the repeat command so we can have our gallery automatically be responsive. And so now we have all of our items will fit into our gallery. I've added a grid gap. So now we have all of our images fitting in, but we have these large gaps. That's because we still have to style our images to have a nice cover fit. So down on mobile first, we'll see our images all in one column, but they'll still have this gap. We can fix that. First, we want to target the gallery item. Give it a height and a width of 100%, and we're going to target its overflow as hidden. Next, we're going to style the actual images inside the gallery item. So we can do that because we gave them each a class of gallery image. Notice that the aspect ratio gets stretched when I give it a height 100%. We need to add object fit. Now everything fits within the space. So now we get this nice gallery. And you can see here I have a typo that I'll fix for an image link. Be careful with the names of your images. I have an empty one. So sometimes when you're copying and pasting, you can have an empty space. So if I delete that and then save, I will now have my whole gallery filled up. So be careful and double check your work. Let's go back to the styles.css. We want to add a transition, so it'll take half a second, and we'll have it ease in and out. So then we need to tell it to do something on the hover state. We'll say gallery image, and then we'll use the special command colon hover. So this is what happens when the cursor hovers. Then we're going to transform it, scale of 1.5. And if I save that, we get this nice zoom in on hover, which is kind of cool. This is completely optional, but it's a nice simple thing to do with just a couple of lines of code. And just like that, we now have a perfectly responsive image gallery. Now, if you remember from the previous gallery tutorial, we can change the grid and have different spans. We can have different ways for it to work. So let's go ahead and style that. So below the gallery image hover, let's add a new class. We'll add gallery span. So we're going to keep all of the code from portfolio gallery, OK? So we'll leave that there, and we'll leave the display grid. But we're going to change the grid template columns for mobile first. So we'll say grid template columns, and we're going to say 1fr for mobile first. Then we will also say grid auto flow dense. This is so if there's any gaps, all the gallery images will flow around and fill it in. The next thing we need to do is have our width and height span classes. So to do that, we can type w-1. And then we can copy this and just change the W's to H's. And then we have to change the grid column to row. So nothing changes on the portfolio gallery. And also nothing would change because we haven't added this class. But first, we need to add our classes for what happens when we are not in mobile first. So we'll scroll down to the first section here. And then after the About page, but before the footer to keep everything organized, we're going to put in a comment so we know what's going on. So these are going to be the grid column and row spans for wider screens. I can copy that to make six copies. And then just change these class names to make sense with how many columns they're going to span. Note that I've changed the grid column span in each one, as well as the class. If you don't change the span, then nothing will happen. Now let's do the same thing for the rows. So for the H1 class, it'll span one, but then we can copy this. And then we can edit the classes and the spans. Then at the beginning, we have gallery span for mobile to be one fractional unit. We want to change this for larger screen. So we'll copy that and then scroll down to our larger screen. 
We can delete this, and now we get to decide how big we want it. So we can use the repeat command. So we'll have it repeat and have six columns. And again, if I save this, uh, nothing happens. So I can open this up like this. But watch what happens if I add this class to the gallery portfolio. So here we have portfolio gallery, and then if I add this class second, it'll overwrite those styles. Now I can type. And now notice that this code is overriding the previous code. Now no matter what, I will have six columns. So this is really handy because you might have different galleries on different pages and you can change things by just adding this class. And then remember, we can go into the HTML and for the different items, we can make sure that it spans. So if I make this gallery item and then I type uh, W-3, notice that this one will span three columns. I can have, for example, this one right here, we can make that go down three and span two. So let's see, which one is this? This is the red malastome. So if I go to the red malastomes and I give this one W-2 and H-3, now it goes down three just like that. Maybe I'll keep it at two. And then you can play around with these however you want. We can make a, another square one. So let's go to the geranium and we'll have a W-2, H-2. And so there, you can have your gallery laid out however you wish it to be, which can be a little bit more interesting than having everything be the same size. If you wanted to go back to the other way and you delete gallery span, notice that you'll have all this weirdness happening, which can be cool, but probably you want the responsive gallery like it's happening down there. So remember that you have to then go back in and delete these codes and classes to have it the way you want. Neither way is the correct way. You will prefer your gallery to look one way or the other, and it's up to you to decide. Once we have our gallery laid out and everything is working, we can go back over to our source control, and then we can type added portfolio gallery, click the check mark, and then we can sync everything with GitHub. Once we have everything loaded and looking the way you want, we need to make sure that we add the JavaScript code for our Lightbox. Here, notice that we have the image when we click on it. We don't want it to be like that. We want it to act like a light box. We've added the class G Lightbox, but we need to add some code down at the bottom. So right before the closing of the body tag, we can type script. And for the source, we can type SRC. And this should be SRC, not SRS. And then below that, we can type script. And then for the type, and then inside the script tags, we can actually type our script. So we're going to make a constant variable, const lightbox equals gl. Make sure those are capitalized, lightbox, then a parentheses, then curly braces. And then we're going to just say loop true, and then put a semicolon. And if we save that, now our lightbox will work. As you can see, we have our arrows here, and we can go back and forth to all our things, which is really great. And then once we've made those changes, make sure that we sync them in our source control. Click the check mark and then sync to GitHub. And then we can go to our portfolio page. And after a little while, it will load. For a while, it will show 404 because it takes a second for GitHub pages to update. But once it's there, you'll be able to see your portfolio online. And the same thing here, again, you may have an error where it has not updated the CSS file. That's fine. In Firefox, go to your preferences, privacy and security, then clear your data. Say clear, clear now. And then if I reload the remote page, now it has a fresh copy of the styles.css and everything works fine. 